thank you for the kind of introduction, except that he made me feel older <laughs> a little bit. I remember that uh, some young man uh, sent a manuscript to uh, Japan Academy, and uh, with the manuscript, it had a letter saying that uh, he wants uh, the referee to be Hironaka. Usually that, uh, you know, author cannot uh, appoint referees. But he said, if Hironaka is still alive, <laughs> and I recommended the paper rejected. <laughs> <laughs> but not because of the letter. <laughs> the contents I read carefully and wasn't uh, oh, good enough. He was too young, maybe. Well, anyway, I'm glad to be alive and standing here. <laughs> and except that uh, I prepared a paper to be projected without being the transparency. But uh, it doesn't work here, unfortunately. Um, I don't know how about him having some kind of financial problem. <laughs> 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 Even the Japanese universities, I know, they, they have that kind of machine everywhere. Yes? Well, but the... Uh, mm. All right. But let me tell you a little bit of history. Um, in this kind of problem, dealing with uh, general singularity, um, it's not something that you can picture it because we don't know what kind of singularity we have. You just write down the equation, say how the singularity looks like. Of course, uh, sometimes you can, but sometimes, most of the case, even the, you cannot uh, draw a picture uh, illustrating some feature, even feature of the uh, singularity. Because there are many equations, but, um, and many singularities, so we must deal with uh, something we don't see it. And from that point of view, Oskar Zariski he was my thesis advisor, he was really um, understanding this point, and uh, he emphasized very much power of algebra, and uh, tried to express everything uh, in terms of algebra. Uh, although you use a sort of geometric instinct but uh, when he tried to write down or proof or theorems, uh, stating theorems and pro proving it, he always tried to make it algebraic. Algebra is, in that sense, a wonderful thing that uh, uh, you can do things without knowing what you are doing. Um, and um, that's one of the difficulty that uh, some people feel when they try to read the papers on the resolution of singularities. It's not anything difficult things. Idea is very simple, but nonetheless, when it's written, it's completely algebraic. And that really rejects some people's try to understand it, what's going on, what's the idea, 
and so on. But anyway, so Abianka, who was mentioned in Howard's lecture, he was the first one uh, who challenged uh, singularities, resolution singularity in particular, when the characteristic is uh, positive. So I have a field anyway, characteristic P positive. And uh, the, so I should say Avianca About 1956, he challenged the uh, resolution singularity in character P, and he was successful in dimension 2. And uh, doing that, he cooked up many uh, techniques, ideas, and he wrote many papers and uh, tried to expand, extend to higher dimensions. Uh, Particular, in particular, uh, dimension three. But uh, if you look at his pa papers, still he is uh, uh, very much two-dimensional. I mean, although he deal with three dimensions sometimes, but uh, very much two-dimensional. And uh, the later, the. Cossart wrote a paper. Actually, it's his thesis, 1973. He, how do I handle this? Well, he looked at the equation like this. Here the y is the one variable and x, x1, xn, n variables, and uh, alpha is a multi multi exponent, the alpha man. And when I write x to the alpha, I mean the product xi alpha i. So he looked at the equation like this. And um, um, he resolved the singularity of this in a very specific way. And um, that is very special. You cannot get really the uh, immediately jump to general equations because it's so special. But nonetheless, his proof for this case is the one that can be modified and extended in the general case. And uh, I want to explain that um, as much as I can. Uh, I don't think I need. I think you can hear me, right? Okay. Um, it's necessary. Only good suit. <laughs> but anyway, it's okay. So let me give the Cossard proof, okay? Of course, here that uh, uh, this to 
to have multiplicity uh, must p, we should have summation. Summation I will write like this. Summation of exponent should be bigger or equal to p. Okay. <coughs> but when you have an equation like this, what you do is take any subset from 1 to n, the set of indices, and then uh, let me introduce uh, sigma b to be the sum of exponent and uh, um, I will write b to be the cardinality of the subset. So the number of uh, indices. Okay. Now, <coughs> then he says, uh, pick the smallest, well, actually, there are many, any one of the smallest uh, B in cardinality and such that uh, <coughs> sigma B the order is still bigger than P. Okay. Actually, that is, let me tell you that the singular locus of this equation is a union of a, uh, uh, oh. let me introduce another. D of B, this is a intersection of the hypersurfaces corresponding to the indices in B. Okay. So, you have you have a certain coordinate uh, system and coordinate hyperplane, coordinate uh, lines, uh, origins, and things like that. Okay. Um, smallest, uh, ah, well, one of the smallest, any one of the smallest, smallest uh, in the cardinality, okay. but still multiplicity p, and then take the blow up with center d or b, the intersection of hypersurfaces, hyperplanes. Well, um, then is this this you can repeat until the alpha becomes uh, smaller. So let me just uh, instead of writing formally, uh, uh, suppose you have three things x one equals zero, x2 equals zero, x3 equals zero. Maybe I will call this coordinate gamma one, gamma two, gamma two, three. And then it has exponents alpha one, alpha two, alpha three. And uh, um, let's suppose that alpha one alpha i plus alpha 2j, uh, sum of the two is less than p uh, for any 
I different from J. So in this case, the B must be the 1, 2, 3, all of them. Okay. So you blow up this. Then picture becomes like this. Here you have a strict transform of gamma i. And uh, there is an exceptional divider, nu. Exceptional. Exceptional divider means inverse image of the center. And uh, then if you hear that the, the point is that this, as soon as you blow up those surfaces corresponding to the indices in B, they separate. They cannot have a, a common point when you take their strict transforms. They meet with the exception divider. So, for instance, if you look at this here, the multiplicity becomes, uh, first of all, that the uh, Here, that the, the transformation is a isomorphic at the generic point of the hypersurface. So, uh, multiplicity is alpha, alpha 1 here, alpha 2 here, and alpha 3 here. And uh, here, it, it carries the multiplicity at this point. So, it's uh, alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 minus because we are dealing with an uh, equation like this. And when you take a strict transform, you must take out p times exception divider. So uh, what is the multiplicity here? That would be alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 uh, minus p plus this one and this one. So it's alpha 1 plus alpha 2. But you see that this, this sum is smaller than this p, I assume. I took the smallest. So this must be less than alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3. In other words, that uh, um, multiplicity drops. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I don't mean that. Uh, this one, uh, yeah, yeah, but also that this one is less than alpha i, any. In other words, that the, here the exponent is smaller than any of the, those exponents. So keep doing this. Eventually, that uh, um, you come to the point where the uh, for any subset B different from the, all the indices, um, the, the number summation of the exponents is less than p. You come to that case. So or actually, that uh, if you take all of them, um, it will be it's bigger than p by assumption, but less than twice p. You have that kind of situation. Now, um, if the characteristic is zero, then uh, by here, the, the only possibility is to blow up 
the origin. Okay? And uh, if you do that, then uh, um, well, let's say that the blow up is covered by fine pieces, but one of the one of the a fine piece you take for instance uh, the y prime equal y divided by x1 and uh, x1 and x2 divided by x1 xn divided by x1 like this and call, call this x1 prime x2 prime the new coordinates okay <coughs> then the uh, um, equation becomes y prime to the p minus um, um, x1 uh, minus p divided by x1 prime minus p and xp. So it's a, if you look at this, the, this has a two possibilities. One possibility is a multiplicity or order is less than uh, p but positive. Or secondly, uh, multiplicity becomes zero. Well, this is the case that when uh, this uh, alpha is exactly p. Okay. Is this x to the alpha in that? Oh, x alpha, yeah. But, uh, x prime. X, yeah. And then, of course, it, it becomes x, yeah. But then, uh, if it, if it's character zero, then the, this is finished because it's it's a zero, so it's a unit. And uh, if y prime is zero, then uh, plus this uh, anyway that uh, you know this kind of equation plus some constant has no singularities in character zero. But character p is different. You must you must. Uh, you can change this y prime to y prime um, minus one or oh, minus uh, some constant, and uh, uh, the constant being the the values of these things. So the product of the Values of xi divided by x1 i bigger than 2. Okay? Because it is a constant, I can. p power in case of p is a additive, so I can just shift the constants here. And then you must look at this minus the constant. But if you look at the minus constant, um, let's say that the, the value of uh, xi divided by x1 is ci. And then uh, you can show that the, the, <coughs> the since ai is less than p <coughs> that uh, this product x1 uh, minus p x alpha the order of this at x equals c or xi equals ci oh no The <coughs> here order at, 
at any point corresponding to uh, the origin, you can see that uh, this should be equal to or less or equal to 1. Because <coughs> you have a, a you, you get the linear factors. Namely that when you have a um, thing like this, when you have this this kind of thing, you know how to re rewrite this as, uh, for instance, x uh, x. Uh, x2 divided by x1 minus c2 and something, and then x3 minus x1 minus c3 and something, and so on, okay? And uh, if these are all non, um, if the, if this, this, this is okay, so the only case is this. So all CIs, uh, CI is not zero for any I. That's the case. Well, then you can see that it's, it must be all that one. So, and uh, one is less than P, so uh, it's done. Proof is done like this. That's his thesis. But here that the, you see that the uh, first uh, step, when the b is smaller than this, and uh, uh, still the order is bigger, so I can take the d of b at the center. That's the first step. The first step is like a character zero, but the very last step is character p, and th this very last step comes in as a the special feature of character P. So that was a very simple observation. <coughs> but uh, it gave us a big hope, at least to me, when I look at his thesis. Um, maybe that's it. But this, you know, when uh, when you have a, this kind of trouble of the translations, and uh, even if this drops to unit, still uh, we don't know what the, usually we don't know what, what is the multiplicity after the uh, change of the variables, or after the translation of y, but um, still there is a hope that it will be smaller. So, the that's not completely hopeless. And then, uh, um, next step came um, with more. This was uh, 1968 on. And uh, how the, I'm not sure when he started, but at least if I look at his papers, it seems that uh, he started uh, here. Started challenging the equation like this, uh, what he wrote today, I guess. Hypersurface is defined by uh, f x y uh, as before, y to the p or even uh, Q uh, minus X alpha, that's a monic like that, and uh, something here, um, G, I'll say HX. Now, <coughs> so this part is a, is a, a monic, and uh, in particular, that I will say 
a gamma harmonic in the sense that the gamma is a, this gamma is a accumulation, accumulation of earlier exceptional divisor. And there are strict transforms. Well, that's come out um, as a factor here. And uh, if uh, um, we, uh, we do it carefully, then uh, it, it becomes a monomer. In other words, this, those uh, gammas, exception, area exception divisors, stay normal crossing. And so uh, you end up with an equation of this type. And this one, we don't know. So naturally, we think that, uh, OK, let's draw, draw the multiplicity of this and uh, come to a uh, COSART case. Then we are done. OK, that's, so that, that's the idea. And this idea is really the, the center of the idea in any approach I know of. Incidentally, this Q, Q is something P to the E, uh, with uh, some, P is a characteristic, E is uh, some positive number. Okay. Now, uh, if you think, look at this equation, and just look at this part, what we are trying to do is uh, applying suitable transformations or choosing good transformations or blow ups, uh, take out uh, as much as uh, uh, monomial parts with respect to the uh, exception dividers, and see if you can lower the multiplicity of H. And then the more in his papers, uh, Kyoto University. 1987, uh, I think. Kyoto University James. <coughs> the, this, the order H can jump. In the following sense, um, the, you apply transformations, and uh, if there is a, you look at the leading term of the transform, and if the leading term happened to be uh, p power or, or q power in this case, then the that can be put in here. Uh, to change to the for the translation of y, so that the, uh, this part um, you may not have a, a monomial factor, or you may, but you may not. And uh, if the monomial factor is there, it will be actually q power or the exponent of zero mod q. But nonetheless, this remaining part. I call that uh, residual factor. And um, this order of H, I call less old of this equation. And this uh, residual order of new f prime could be bigger than 
this is your order of F, the original order. And uh, <coughs> he proved that uh, when E equals 1, for, so Q equals P, this uh, difference is bounded by uh, 1. So it can't jump more than 1. And of course, you can generalize this uh, to the general case, like uh, difference is bounded by uh, largest power of p dividing all the exponent alpha, things like that. Uh, but anyway, uh, it turns out that uh, this q equal p case is most important in my approach, anyway. There may be some other <laughs> techniques people can develop, but um, the behavior of this residual part is too complicated to handle, a uh, jump becomes bigger, and it's not clear whether jump repeats or not. But um, the, in this case, we can see that the jump cannot repeat. In fact, once it happens to jump, then it never happens again, unless you do a very stupid transformation. I mean, there is a certain kind of permissibility conditions coming from all the earlier data. And then it cannot jump again, once again. So it, it can jump only one. And then eventually it drop by something. If drop two, it's OK. Then I can start all over again. And if uh, it does only one, then it goes just b go back to the original situation. But there that we know exactly the, how the reading term looks like. And uh, 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 it, if it jump again, then there is something called special parameters. I call it metastatic parameters. That number increases. Or the, the, the multiple drop again. So, and uh, also, once it's dropped, and then, um, so start from degree D, or the D and D plus one, and come back to D, then um, there is something, uh, some specific, specific condition that you can jump again. That is uh, written in terms of the so-called strict tangent space, or the smallest number of variables that appears in the initial term. Of course, here that uh, I must be very specific, because uh, those normal crossing exception dividers are treated separately. But other free variables I can choose so that they make it minimum. And uh, the jump takes place only uh, it has those variables is closely related with this monomial part. And the monomial part, of course, here that the, um, I wish I can show you in the, in the um, OHP, but anyway, um, think of all the Q powers as constant. Of course, they are not a constant. But anything that appears Q powers, think of it as constant. If it's constant, then you can talk about the smallest number of variables to express uh, the initial terms. And that, those variables must coincide with the initial part of this. But once it from D plus 1 to drop to D, and it stays there, 
Then the new uh, exceptional dividers are out of this range of the limited variable, limited set of variables. So that eventually it must go down. So at least, so you, you go up one and stay there and go down and up and so on, but eventually it goes down to two at least. And then you start all over again, and again it becomes lower and lower. Finally, that this can be made into order one. So that's a, a very rough idea. Okay. Um, to explain this, um, we must uh, really have a good way of um, describing a relation between this and this. And, um, um, but let's, uh, let's not talk about it until overhead comes. But, but anyway, let me t tell you another thing. Um, so you see that you must formulate induction on E. That's a, that's a difficult uh, task in this point. If, if E equal 1, we have that kind of phenomenon, just one, and eventually you can make it better. But uh, uh, this E could be bigger than one, so in that case, we must know how to make induction on E. Okay? But another thing that, uh, uh, going back to calculus zero, uh, one of the things that, but maybe only one, Thing, I, could, I made a good contribution in resolution singularity after Zariski and other people, is that uh, uh, normal crossing is ubiquitous. It appears everything, everywhere. Not only it appears everywhere, but also it must be used everywhere. That is the one thing that I noticed. It's not just like a uh, for the covering, if the discriminant is normal crossing, or thing like that. It's not enough. You must look at everything. So let me give you an example like that. Um, this also uh, worked out with uh, more, I think it's 1960, no, 1980. Well, anyway, equation is like this. G square minus X square Y square. Okay? <coughs> well, then you have a, a singular locus, singularity of this equation. It's a two lines. One is a x equal z equal 0, and the other is y equal z equal 0. You can see the gradient vanishes on the union of two lines like this. Oh, what is the worst singularity? This is the worst singularity. Of course, uh, the singularity, singular point of the singular locus. Now you blow this up. You blow up the origin. <coughs> okay? You, you expect that something good happens. Sorry, nothing happens. Um, for instance, uh, say, take many charts in the blowing up, but anyway, one of the charts that d prime equals z divided by x, and uh, uh, y prime equals y divided by x, and x prime is just x. Okay? Take this chart in the blowing up. And then uh, the Exceptional divider is, this is the exceptional parameter. 
is a defined exceptional divisor. And uh, so, uh, transform will be x, uh, x, the multiplicity is 2, so minus 2, f, which happens like this, z prime square minus x prime square, y prime square. Don't you see the same? It is exactly the same equation. So nothing happening. Not only that, since you grow up this, let's call this uh, uh, gamma 1 and gamma 2, the two lines, then uh, you, you get a singular locus like this, a new, si new singular. And here there's gamma 1 prime, gamma 2 prime. They are separated. But there is a new one like this. And uh, this point is the same as this. Uh, this point is the same as this. So you get the same kind of singularity many, many times. You can keep doing that, you know, pick up the worst singular point and blow up. Keep doing that. You have infinite many of the same kind of singularities. Nothing happens. Well, um, I tell you why that this happens. That this is my way of understanding. This is monomial. Well, I mean a normal crossing, if you like. The whole equation is not a normal crossing in any sense. But if normal crossing appears in the, say, YSRS uh, uh, polynomial uh, of the equation uh, somewhere in the coefficients, then that's already ultimate. You shouldn't just take the worst singular points. You should take, rather, in this case, that if you take uh, this line as a center, and you drop, then it drop, multiply, drops immediately, becomes smooth. Or you can drop this line. So you see that, uh, like uh, in the Cossard case, of course, in the beginning, that you must, uh, you don't know what the worst singularity is. If it's uh, something you don't know, you must attack them. Could be dangerous. But anyway, <laughs> As soon as you become a normal crossing, anywhere in the equations, that's it. The rest is just take the biggest center possible. Uh, that, that is uh, my discovery in the 1960s. And that, that made me possible to prove the resolution singularity in all dimensions in case zero. But now this also appears in case of P. So that, that makes the formulation much more complicated. Okay? It's not exactly like this. You may have many equations, uh, many terms, and you have monomials uh, try to factor out. And, uh, <coughs> but I found something uh, I remember the how they wrote the paper with the title that the Hironaka's proof doesn't work in capital P. That was the title of the paper. I was shocked. <laughs> but <laughs> Uh, maybe he, uh, he is right, but uh, nonetheless, uh, <laughs> I challenge, I continue to challenge. And the um, point is, um, uh, equation of the type so unit, unit function times some monomial, or maybe I got this is a gamma monomial. And what I say, W uh, O zero zero. Okay. That, that, what I call static 
Now, um, static is not quite stable. In the, in the character zero, the normal crossing is stable, and uh, it's ultimate state. But the character P, the, the, it's only uh, static things. And if you transformations, you get the something like what I call offspring, like a small child or something in addition. And uh, because of the translations, translation gives extra terms. And that extra terms looks like, actually, that the general case is this to the power uh, r. r is some power, uh, say, f. f is uh, less than or equal to or less than e and zeros. And this. This R is called depth. <laughs> and this is static things. After transformation, it gets uh, uh, new children, so to speak, um, of depths bigger than the original ones. Okay, And keep doing this. But uh, uh, fortunately, that uh, the, the First child is uh, very dominant, like human brothers and sisters. Anyway, <laughs> the, so that uh, uh, it turns out that it's, uh, it's enough to look at first offspring spring carefully. Of course, uh, after a certain num number of uh, preparation is necessary, uh, what we call cleaning of the equations. But after that, um, we can handle this. And uh, the, so the question turns out uh, in the resolution singularity for character P, just where you don't take this age, the transform is the summation of this kind of things. Oh, by the way, this, this W is a transversal to the X. This is a normal crossing thing. Um, this part is kind of, uh, maybe I'll just uh, only part of it, so that's, I, it defines area exceptional dividers. And that, that part is very rigid. And uh, you, must be, you must be really uh, careful about it not to destroy the normal crossings and so on. But this W is only, only transversal coming from that uh, when uh, this alpha was or P the you remember that uh, this after transformation I take out the constant terms and then you get the linear uh, first uh, order one e e polynomial. That defines a smooth hypersurface. That is this W. So it's a transversal to the uh, normal crossing path, but it's, uh, it's very flabby. I, co I call it uh, 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 foliational. You, you can see that this moves around. And uh, the formation of parameter uh, because when I was talking with uh, Aroka and Kano, uh, they told me that there must be a pencil there or variations. And uh, although it moves around, it stays transversal. And uh, this, this number is uh, a zero or a one. So either there is none like that or or just one exponent one, and define smooth hypersurface. Well, that's uh, an idea. <laughs> Sorry, I spent more time, but I started late. <laughs> 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 <laughs>